This video is from the official World of Warcraft channel. It's Cataclysm Patch by Patch Expansion Recap. I'm gonna make a brief summary right here, brief introduction. Cataclysm is special expansion for me because I started playing in Blizzard while expansion was out, uh, while Cataclysm was out. So I'm really curious where exactly I blend into blizzard is it from the start of the expansion because i don't quite remember when it was cataclysm released exactly so yeah and this video is actually narrated by someone and uh i'm really curious what uh, where i'm gonna land here let's just jump into it the year is 2010. On Earth, you're using your Windows Vista PC to look up Avatar Showtimes, and your Facebook wall is telling you that Lady Gaga is wearing a meat dress. You need to mail your Iron Man 2 DVD back to Netflix, and on the way to the post office, the radio is a buzz about TikTok, the Kesha song. The app hasn't even been invented yet. In Azeroth, you're an absolute boss, having just vanquished entire armies of undead while ending Arthas' reign as the Lich King. World of Warcraft Cataclysm is going live, bringing with it sweeping changes to Azeroth and to many of WoW's systems as Deathwing bursts forth and shatters the world. Fast forward to today and Deathwing is returning once again in Cataclysm Classic launching May 20th. A lot has happened since 2010, so let's take a moment to revisit Cataclysm patch by patch for a refresher on the story. Dude, that was kind of depressing. Did you see that? I mean, first you're alone in the car, and after that you have kids in the car. And some of the features introduced. And take a look at the brand new changes coming in Cataclysm Classic. Patch 4.0.1 was the Cataclysm Systems pre-patch, which introduced Ooh. several interface and system updates ahead of launch. Reforging was introduced, allowing players to allocate some of an item's secondary stat to a different yep. secondary stat. And Mastery that. was introduced, offering a new secondary stat to love consider. That as well. Spells and abilities changed, removing ranks in favor of simply scaling with character level, and an updated spellbook UI came along with that. Ammo was removed from the game, a nice quality of life improvement for hunting nice. especially, while cloth, leather, and mail users saw their armor become as durable as plate, which normalized repair costs across classes. Nice. Patch 4.0.3 brought us the shattering. shattering. Without warning, the corrupted dragon aspect Deathwing erupted from the stone heart of Deepholm, the domain of Earth within the elemental plane. Jagged fissures were torn across the land okay. and monstrous waves pummeled coastal regions. From Thousand Needles to the Blasted Lands, the surface of Azeroth was reforged through violent upheavals. Both Horde and Alliance were forced to defend their homes against Deathwing and his minions. They were by forced! By the unsettling fear that the world as they know it has changed forever. The Shattering saw the continents of Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms reshaped, offering different experiences in previously existing areas and new adventures. Am I the only one? I, I love the new Orgrimmar. Am I the only one? Maybe I'm in never before seen zones. Two races were unlocked, goblins for Horde and Worgen for the Alliance, and fresh race and class combinations accompanied them. Nine new dungeons three? were introduced. Blackrock Caverns, a network of tunnels created by Deathwing okay. in the Blackrock Mountains, where heroes face down members of the Twilight Hammer cult. The Throne of Tides, an underwater dungeon and part of the Abyssal Maw that was filled with Naga and Ancients of the dungeon. Old Gods. The Vortex Pinnacle located I in the Elemental Plane, dungeon. where armies of air elementals gathered and had to be stopped. The Stone Core, in the Temple of Earth above I Deepwell, love this that had dungeon. fallen to the Twilight Hammer with the Mad Priestess Azeel in control. The lost city of Tolvir and Aldo, which pit champions against the hostile never dungeon. set. A faction of Tolvir created by the Titans to guard their research facilities. The Halls of Origination, part of the Titan research facility of Uldum, that was once used to develop new races, was left full of ancient defenses to protect from intruders. I love this as Grim well. Batol, a once great dwarven fortress that had been occupied like by that, the Twilight that Hammer much. and the corrupted Black Dragonflight, saw champions ride atop dragons to bombard enemies before engaging them in combat on foot. The Dead Mines, once the hideout of the Defias Brotherhood's leaders like Edwin Van Cleef, became the primary Defias stronghold from which new leader Vanessa Van Cleef plotted her vengeance. Shadow Van Keep, formerly home to Archmage Arugal and his worgen until it was liberated yes. by Horde adventurers, was occupied by Vincent Godfrey, traitor to both Gilneas and the Forsaken, and was a target of both the Alliance and the Horde. Three new raids saw champions face okay. down some of the bigger threats and me. allies of Deathwing. 
Blackwing Descent was the lair of the resurrected Nefarian, son of Deathwing, and the site of the heinous experiments he conducted in attempts to create a new breed of chromatic dragons. Bastion of Twilight was the primary fortress of the Twilight Hammer. Cho'Gall, the leader of the cult dwell so three here, raids are released Astro, on mother of Nefarian and Anixia, and creator of the first Twilight Dragons, reanimated and overseeing the creation of another Twilight Clutch. Throne of Four Winds was located inside the Dude, Sky beautiful. Wall and was Alakir's personal lair. With the barrier between the elements of Plane and Azeroth ruptured, his invasion needed to be stopped. Patch 4.1, Rise of the Zandalari, was the Never first major that. patch of Cataclysm. The days where the Great Troll Empire stretched across ancient Kalimdor were long past. Millennia of war and eternal strife have stripped these nations of their power, lands, and glory. As Azeroth recovered from the destruction of the Cataclysm, the world's divided troll population faced a bleak Oh, future. actually, I was already These dark playing. times spurred the trolls of the Zandalar, the historically no, wise no. and scholarly wait, wait, tribe wait. from which all trolls... Wait, wait, wait. No, I was not playing, <laughs> but I I now remember what happened in this patch. Originated to take drastic action. They embarked on a bold crusade to save their race by uniting trolls into a single mighty empire. With the Zandalari's aid, the fallen capitals of the Gurubashi and the Imani nations, Zulgarub and Zulaman, began rebuilding, replenishing their forces for a bloody campaign to expand their territories. Yet, Vol'jin and his Dark Spear trolls were not aligned with the Zandalari. They swore to stand with their horde comrades, and even work with the Alliance should the trolls ignite a new war on Azeroth. Soon, Vol'jin was forced to act on his promise. For if the Gurubashi and Amani were left to their own devices, the world would know the legendary strength and savagery of the ancient troll empires once again. Trolls. With the Who trolls attempting trolls? to rebuild and reunite, Zulaman and Zulgarub were reimagined, becoming heroic five player dungeons. Guilds received some attention with the introduction of guild challenges that rewarded achievements and gold for completing various content in a guild group. The Guild Love Finder to tool was also introduced, designed to help players find like minded friends to tackle these new adventures with. And a very helpful quality of life improvement also came with this patch. The ability to resurrect allies from raid or party frames instead of having to locate a fallen companion's body in the world. Big. Patch 4.2, Rage of the Firelands, was the second major patch I think I started playing here. Across the breadth of Azeroth, the Horde and the Alliance dealt crushing blows to Deathwing's elemental minions and fanatic Twilight's hammer cultists. Through it all, the Earthen Ring had never wavered from its tireless charge, holding Azeroth itself together amid the tidal fury of errant magical energies that churned at the Maelstrom. Yet, as the elements continued their chaotic upheaval, like it seemed this that the Noble Shamanic Order might the finally middle. be on the verge of breaking beneath the great weight that rested on its shoulders. Even Thrall, for all his wisdom and skill, had grown aggravated by his failure to effectively communicate with Azeroth's elements. Recently, his calls were acknowledged, but the malevolent entity that responded had only intensified Thrall's fears and doubts. Patch 4.2 brought with it a new raid, the Firelands. This molten hellscape in the elemental plane was forged by the Titans to house Ragnaros and his servants. Ragnaros' invasion of Mount Hyjal could not go unanswered, as champions took the fight to oh, his domain. Big. A new legendary item, Dragonrath, Terragosa's Rest, could be obtained after completing a considerable questline. This two-handed staff was incredibly powerful, and wielding it was a true testament to dedication. A nice quality of life change improved the durability display's warnings, adjusting yellow to signify 20% durability as opposed to a durability of 5. And access to a wealth of information Big. and lore was added directly in-game with the introduction of nice. the Dungeon Journal. Still not the best way to explain Patch things. Patch 4.3 yeah. Hour of Twilight was the third and final installment of yeah, I was already playing and here, its for sure. largest content update since launch. In the wake of the Cataclysm, Azeroth's champions rose up to thwart the forces of the maddened Black Dragon aspect, Deathwing. Thus far, the world's defenders had shattered the power base of the Twilight's Hammer cult and defeated the raging elemental lords Alakir and Ragnaros. Yet despite these victories, as long as Deathwing was free to pursue his twisted goals, Azeroth would remain under threat. No one was more aware of this fact than the great dragon aspects such as Dormu, Alexstrasza, Kalikos, and Ysera. 
Together with the wise shaman Thrall, they devised a plan to vanquish Deathwing with a weapon of his own design, the infamous Dragon Soul. Thrall and the noble Aspects would call upon the Horde and Alliance to help him retrieve the artifact, no longer in existence, from the distant past. Those brave enough to face the challenge would embark on a perilous journey from Azeroth's apocalyptic end time to Dragon Soul's point of origin during the catastrophic War of the Ancients. If the heroes succeeded, an even more harrowing battle awaited them in their presence. Oh, that's how he Power of Twilight that brought three new dungeons. End Time saw heroes visit potential futures that would come to exist should Deathwing prevail, pitting them against visages of corrupted heroes of Azeroth and ultimately facing down a tormented version of Noise Dormu called Murazond, who created the infinite dragonflight and shattered the timeways in an attempt to subvert his own mortality. Well of Eternity flung heroes back 10,000 years in time just before the Sundering to assist Illidan and Tyrande in battling the Burning Legion as Ashara attempted to bring Sargeras himself to Azeroth. Hour of Twilight saw heroes prepare for the final battle with Deathwing, and fight alongside Thrall to bring the Dragon Soul to Wormrest Temple. The final raid, Dragon Soul, continued. Dude, the, the reality is that I was not playing PvP back then. I was not playing PvP until probably Legion was the first time I played PvE. Continued the fight in the besieged temple through the last of Deathwing's lieutenants and ultimately onto the destroyer himself. As Thrall, the Dragon Aspects, and the champions of Azeroth attempted to end the Cataclysm once and for all. A new legendary pair of daggers called Fangs oh. of the Father could be obtained by rogues after completing a multi quest chain that concluded with the defeat of Deathwing. And the Raid Finder tool was introduced, offering a quick way for players to form a group for a specifically tuned version of the Dragon Soul Raid. With all these epic storylines, legendary items, dungeons, raids, the Cataclysm era was densely packed. But perhaps one of the greatest systems introduced in all of Cataclysm, perhaps one of the greatest systems introduced in all of WoW, came with patch 4.3. The Transmog greatest? The greatest system? This new cosmetic system allows players to customize their gear like never before by copying the appearance of one item onto another. Gone were the days of mismatched armor and feeling like you had to choose stats over aesthetics. Long live the days of sick mogs and looking as good as you feel. In Cataclysm Classic, the core story and experiences will remain, but a few things have gotten some changes. Firstly, things are going to be faster. An increased content cadence will condense the entire expansion into about one year, while an expanded pre-patch means the action starts sooner. As of the pre-patch going live, the Shattering has come to Azeroth. Yep. The Kazan and Gilnea's starter zones are now available, and Goblins and Worgen are unlocked and can be leveled up to 80. Transmogrification is unlocked, as are account-wide collections. New class and race combos are unlocked, along with class updates like talents and spells. Archaeology and reforging are also unlocked. Accelerated leveling from 1 to 80 is in place, which will help you roll alts in this faster environment. And flying is unlocked in the newly reshaped Kalimdor and Eastern Kingdoms. At launch, several more iconic features from Cataclysm will come online. Let's see. Five zones will be unlocked. Mount Hyjal, Vashir, Twilight Highlands, Uldum, and Deep Home will all be available for 80 through 85 questing. And the nine dungeons we explored earlier that were part of patch 4.0.3 will all be unlocked, along with a new heroic dungeon system. The Tol Barad World PvP Zone that That's pits important. Horde against Alliance for the control of three objectives will also unlock at launch, as yes. will everyone's favorite fairgrounds, Darkmoon Island. After launch, Throne of the Four Winds, Blackwing Descent, and Bastion of Twilight will make their appearance. And a new flexible raid lock system which allows players to do both the 10 and 25 player versions of raids in the same week. Plus, additional content updates will continue to roll out as the expansion unfolds. Thanks for joining us in this walk down memory lane. Since no it's worries, 2024, man. feel free to enjoy streaming your movies, scrolling seven different social accounts, and not mailing any DVDs. Bye.